You've got your gas ports, gas blocks, gas tubes, BCG, gas keys, gas block alignment, dwell time, everything in between. Today, we break down the AR15 gas system components necessary to make sure your AR15 cycles shot after shot after shot. Hey guys, Randy with AT3Tactical.com here today with the gassiest episode of our Ultimate AR-15 Beginner's Guide, episode number four, the AR-15 gas system. So let's be real, the whole reason that we love this gun so much is because squeeze after squeeze after squeeze, it just works. Uh, that's all thanks to some masterful engineering decades ago that gave us the direct impingement gas system that we have today. All right, so there's two main gas systems out there running a vast majority of today's semi-automatic rifles like your AR-15. There's a piston-driven gas system and a direct impingement gas system. For today, we'll kick that piston gas system explanation down the road for a future video, but the 90% or more of today's standard AR-15s operate on some form of direct impingement. So what is direct impingement? In its simplest terms, impingement means both the act of colliding caused by something sharply striking something else, or it's the effect produced from a sharp strike of one object into another. In the case of our AR-15 gas system, there really isn't necessarily a solid object striking another solid object to produce a reaction, but instead, the force of gas leaving the gas tube impinges or impacts the components within the chamber, your BCG, causing a sharp thrust backward, aka direct impingement. But it does take a series of precision machine interconnected parts to make all that magic happen. So let's talk about the five components of your AR-15 gas system next, then we'll look at each one individually to better wrap our heads around how all this works. First up is gas itself, because without gas, we just wouldn't be talking today. Gas has to come from somewhere, and of course, that starts with your cartridge, your ammunition. Again, we're focused on just the 5.56.223 basic AR-15, so as for today, when you fire a round, you produce the gas needed to not only project the round down range, but also send some of that gas into the AR-15 gas system component number two, the gas port. Remembering back to our barrels episode, well, as the gas from the discharged round travels down the barrel, a little bit of it takes an exit up through the gas port. And as we also discussed in that episode, the gas port size and gas port location will be predetermined by the barrel manufacturer. It's our job to match the right gas system components to our specific barrel, whether we're modding one off the shelf or building one from scratch, and that starts with your choice of gas block. Gas system component number three, these gas blocks, they are pretty simple in how they work, and we'll break them down a little further in just a bit, but basically, here, a hole in the gas block aligns perfectly with the gas port, provides a U-turn, so to speak, for the gas to travel backwards into gas component number four, the gas tube. The gas tube is pretty easy. It's like a highway for your gas to travel back to the upper receiver. We'll discuss, you know, lengths, materials, and things like that for your gas tube shortly, but at the end of the highway, it hits component number five, your gas key on your BCG, and that's where we're gonna stop the gas discussion for today because the BCG will have its own episode in just a bit. Up first is the gas block, and there's definitely a ton of different diameters, sizes, different designs, different features, but at the end of the day, they all have one job. That's to accept the gas coming from the barrel gas port. If you don't hear anything else today, please hear this. Properly aligning your gas port and gas block as perfectly as possible is crucial to reliable and proper operation of your AR-15 get this wrong, you'll likely battle cycling issues down the road and get it right, and alignment is just one of those things you won't have to check if cycling issues occur down the road. Outside of that, all gas blocks also have a gas port to accept the gas tube and one or more gas tube roll pins to keep that tube lined and in place. Gas blocks also need to be secured in place to the barrel, and there's a couple ways that we get this done. Some gas blocks will have one or more set screws to hold or secure the gas block onto the barrel in proper alignment. Others, like the A-frame gas block slash front sight post, 
will have screw set screws installed from the side to squeeze the barrel as they tighten. All in all, the point of the set screws is to make sure that your gas block alignment holds strong when you're shooting round after round after round or beating it up at the range. Gas blocks come in different diameters and sizings and getting this one right is pretty damn easy. Look at the barrel manufacturer and the sizing that they have listed and just match that one. Most commonly for 5.56223 ARs, you'll find that the 0 0.750 or 3 quarters matches most barrels, but there are other ones out there, so just pay attention. Beyond that, there's all sorts of shapes and styles, low profile, under the handguard, with or without Picatinny rail on the top or the bottom, skeletonized for weight reduction, but the big one is adjustable and non-adjustable. So what is gas block adjustability for? Well, to increase or decrease the amount of gas traveling back to the BCG, so that way you can manipulate or change the way that it cycles. Does that mean that your average AR-15 beginner will need one today? I think the easiest way to answer that is to give the best blanket answer that I can and say for 80% or more of beginner AR shooters, adjustable gas blocks shouldn't be a concern for you. For everyone else, you're probably picking adjustable gas blocks because down the road, you might have already decided that you need a suppressor or would like a suppressor. Just remember that for 80% of you, non-adjustable will be the right answer. On to the gas tube next, and the biggest decision factor here is gas tube length, but that one's pretty easy since the decision is already made for you since you're limited to the gas length that your barrel was designed for, in which case there's four different lengths. First up is pistol length, which typically measures around four inches from the end of the, to the port. In general, pistol length gas tubes are paired with barrels that are 10 inches or near 10 inches or less. Next is the carving length. The carving length measures on average from seven inches from the end to the port. And these are often found on barrels between 10 inches and 18 inches. Getting a bit longer is the mid-length gas tube next. Typically averages nine inches from tip to port and coupled with barrels from 14 to 20 inches long. Finally, the rifle length gas tube, roughly 12 inches from tip to port and across the industry, almost always placed on barrels 18 inches or longer. However, notice that there's overlap between the carbine length and the mid-length gas systems and the barrel length ranges that they cover. This actually leaves a lot of tinkering and tweaking room for those who are seeking optimal performance. That comes down to dwell time, cartridge choice, ammo specifications, and whatnot. But for your average AR-15 shooter, just match your gas tube length to the length that your barrel was designed for and call it a day. Another gas tube choice that you'll encounter is material. Stainless steel is largely the industry standard, but there are some other tubes that you'll see in different grades of steel, titanium, nitrided or not, and more. As it pertains to your weekend range day, stick with the standard and again, call it a day. And from the gas tube, we flow right into the gas key on your BCG. And for that, we have a complete episode on its own that covers the entire BCG. But we aren't quite done yet today. Let's next talk about proper gas block alignment. Earlier you heard me say that alignment is one of the most crucial parts to get right during your build or modding your existing AR-15 and some barrel manufacturers and gas block manufacturers actually made it pretty easy for you. Thinking back to the barrels that we saw in episode 2, almost all will have a natural shoulder or stopping point for the gas block to seat. However, 8 or 9 times out of 10, that doesn't mean that the gas port and the gas block are optimally aligned. So how do you solve that? Well, you could take the help of a barrel manufacturer who already pre's installs the gas block ready to go for you, or you might seek out a barrel that actually has been dimpled on the underside of the gas port, which gives you an indexing point to tighten your gas block set screws for optimal alignment. But if you choose a barrel that doesn't have one of those pre-easy to assemble options, don't worry because later on in the series, I've got some tools, tips, and tricks to make sure that you get gas block alignment right every time. Because what's an AR-15 if you don't have a reliable option to mag dump like a madman down at the range? We all know that things start to heat up real quick with those mag dumps and actually shooting in general. So not to worry, episode five is coming up next over here. It's all about handguards, quad rails, and more. Wouldn't you know it that your choice of handguard actually has very little to do with heat? 
Chew on that. We'll see you over there.